The scariest thing about this video is this scenario isn't that far-fetched. The Soviet Union joining Germany in the Axis faction was a possibility. I mean, their non-aggression pact was supposed to last for 10 years. Also, they both worked together to completely destroy Poland. So let's see how well the Axis does against the Allies in the World War Simulator. I've actually tried to only include some of the major, major members of each faction to let all the other places kind of choose a side. Because, uh, yeah, with the big bad Soviet Union choosing the Axis, uh, a lot of countries might have changed their mind. Can't even imagine how chaotic China is going to be in this situation. Obviously, China was kind of in their warlord period right here before WW2. I'm sure a lot of these places are going to join the Axis with Japan. Now, the British is bringing, of course, their entire empire to war, but they really might struggle keeping some of this overseas territory safe. I am absolutely predicting a third and fourth faction to probably be created. Maybe something like an independent movement or something like that. And because it's World War II, we're doing winner takes all in the war. Because that's just how how things were rolling back then. That actually makes me a little nervous. Here we go. Let's see what happens. The year is 1939. Spain is finished with their civil war. So this is a fascist Spain. Not that that really is going to make a difference. Now this game actually allows for a lot of power to come out of South America. We'll see which team they join or if they form their own team. That'd be kind of cool, like a Latin American faction. There actually already is kind of a Latin American faction forming between Mexico and Nicaragua. It is so far the only team to form. Oh, but here's another one. And this is just like Hearts of Iron 4. We have kind of a North Nordic faction between Denmark, Sweden, and then Iceland and, oh, Iceland just went to, Iceland's supposed to be independent, aren't they? Iceland and Greenland. It's really just Sweden and Denmark that have formed that team. Oh man, I do not predict you guys are going to do too well. I really doubt there's going to be an Oshlis of Austria. That is unless, like, Austria joins the Axis, and then you know how this game allows, like, reunifications towards the late part. Revolts will be a thing. We have Spain versus France. So it looks like the Allies are already trying to eliminate pockets of fascism around the world. Also, the UK just declared war on Yemen. Post Costa Rica versus Nicaragua, and Costa Rica immediately got eliminated. Why would they do that with the help of Mexico? And the first target of this new axis has been Luxembourg, again, immediately eliminated. Ooh, we have kind of a Middle Eastern pact forming somewhat between Iran and Afghanistan. We have the U.S. just completely destroying the Dominican Republic and probably Cuba as well. The U.S. actually controls a huge portion of the Caribbean now, and they want even more. I wonder if the Cubans will now join the axis. While the British are trying to destroy Yemen, we now also have Saudi Arabia involved. Maybe Saudi Saudi Arabia joins the Allies. A couple of two new Chinese teams forming. Uh, these guys actually formed an alliance with Dutch Indonesia. I don't even know if they are. Oh, they are technically the Dutch East Indies. Now, this is not under the Netherlands, though, interestingly. Some movement out of the Baltic nations. Actually, Germany is moving in after... Oh, they're going after that Prussian territory, baby. And Romania is trying to fight one pixel through Czechoslovakia. That doesn't seem to be the move, Romania, but whatever. Ah, uh, the next target for the Axis is Denmark and Sweden. Sweden won't be able to be neutral this time around. France just conquered Portugal and they're about to conquer Spain because Spain just ran out of money. So the Allies now have a really strong foothold in Western Europe. Ooh, there's a very strong uh, Chinese team forming because uh, they just got... Is this, um, this is nationalist China, I believe? Yeah, because the communists are here with Mao Zedong. Of course, Denmark was conquered, so it's only a matter of time before Sweden is as well. Oh, they can't use their new Prussian territory to move across the Baltic Sea. They're just like a couple squares out of the way. Of course, not a whole lot of things happening from South America. What else is new? Ooh, the Latvians have already revolted away from the German Reich. Revolts are going to become a big deal in this video. That's why I kept them on intentionally. So even though we have winner takes all, the revolts are going to make a difference. Greece and Serbia coming together, which I think this is supposed to be Yugoslavia, but whatever. Romania is making some progress against Czechoslovakia, but not much. Ooh, the Germans, that did not take long for them to eliminate. Or wait a second, was it Estonia that actually eliminated the Latvian revolt? It was. And now the British are going in after Nepal. The British are trying to, uh, I guess, extend their... T they're actually losing a lot in the Raj. Uh, England, what do you do? What do you guys doing? The UK just run out of money? They did just run out of money. And France is only at 32 bucks. Okay, what are the Allies doing right now? Meanwhile, the Soviets, they got cash. They got money over here. Uh, US might want to give some money away. The Thunder Dragon Empire, it's actually not even the Thunder Dragon. Who is Nepal again? I mean, I know who they are. I just remember, I, I can't remember their cool name. Do you guys just peace out? They did just peace out. I thought that wasn't part of the game. Winner take all. Whatever. That's crazy, Nepal. Bolivia's declared war on Chile. I don't even know how they're going to make this fight because of the mountain range. Saudi Arabia has completely gotten rid of of all of Yemen. Also, Ethiopia is apparently fighting the allies and they're winning big in Africa. And it's because, like I said, France and the UK, they ran out of money. Serbia just eliminated Albania, bringing them closer to their Greek ally. We have Czechoslovakia actually working with Belgium. I don't know how Belgium is going to help you out in the war against Romania, but you are pressing forward. Maybe they're, honestly, actually that does help out a lot because they're going give to give you money. Mexico, again, trying to create some sort of Central American alliance with now Honduras and El Salvador on their side. Oh, the US did destroy Cuba. Now we have Venezuela and 
Colombia working together. Ooh, the Belgium, oh, Belgium just has the Congo. The Congo are not independent. We got Tano Tuva is here. So there's another new member. Let's see if Tano Tuva helps in the fight against Mongolia. We now have the German Reich going after Norway as they did historically. The only difference here is they attacked uh, Sweden. Is the Germans doing okay money-wise? I guess they are. Meanwhile, Japan on the other hand, they aren't doing anything, which maybe is a good thing because there's Axis members that have a pretty strong economy. We do have an independent Philippines. This is not owned by the USA. Oh crap, wait, why did they do that? The, the Ger okay, the Germans just started World War II officially because they declared war on Canada for some reason. I don't know why they did that. I think it's because they had Greenland territory. Maybe they wanted to extend their control over the North Pole. They wanted Santa. And the French have already bursted through the Maginot Line. They're not even going to sit back and wait this time. Now, this is going to be interesting. The Germans have a lot more money and a lot more land. Oh, but the problem is the Nor Norwegians could give them some trouble. The Germans might collapse here. The USSR is not giving them any money. Oh, they did peace out. Oh, and Sweden just got their freedom. They just revolted successfully. We'll see how long that lasts. So winner takes all doesn't mean there can't be a white peace, I guess. It just means if you win the war, you will take all. I, I guess that makes sense. A little bit more activity in South America, but still not a whole lot of border movements. I'm actually getting a little bit nervous for the axes here. That sounds like a weird statement to make. Uh, Germany's not doing that well. Oh, the USSR is help. Oh, they just died. Wow. Okay, well, there goes uh, Mustache Man. That's interesting. And now Norway has a huge empire up here. Let's see if they're going to be able to fight the USSR. The USSR has a better economy, but that doesn't mean anything. Is Norway even in a faction? They are not. Uh, the Soviets have become the new leader of the Axis without Germany. Man, who's going to get Ethiopia on their side? Look how huge Ethiopia is. I mean, game, same goes for Nepal. I love that the Norwegians did this. Of course, it'd be Norway. They, they fought hard. Czechoslovakia peaced out with Romania almost when they were about to take the capital. Now, they were fighting Serbia, but not anymore. Austria has now declared war on Italy, or maybe vice versa. No, it was Austria declaring war on Italy. Why? I have no idea. Maybe revenge for World War One. This is going to be extremely interesting because actually learn losing the Germans doesn't really mean that much. The USSR is still far and away the biggest power in the world. It's actually crazy. It's not even close. Meanwhile, the British have actually lost a lot of territory because they can't protect all this stuff overseas. France is doing a little bit better. Communist China was just taken out, so no Mao in this universe. The US is trying to extend their control over the Caribbean by going after Haiti. And bam, Mexico now has a complete, almost complete monopoly over Central America. They just need Panama. Brazil's finally done something. Ooh, a little football alliance or soccer. Brazil, Uruguay, and Argentina. I'm literally going to call this the World Cup Alliance. These are the three nations in America that have won a World Cup. This is actually hilarious that it's these three. Oh my goodness. We, this is literally, what is that called again? Uh, I can't remember the exact, I know the European or the English translation. This is between seas. This is this like little faction that Poland wanted to form with a lot of these people in Europe. Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary. Oh, also Belgium is a part of that. I forgot about that. We actually have the Soviets moving after Chinese warlords now. This is putting some interesting scenarios inside of my head with an Axis just gone, with a Germany like eliminated immediately in like 1939, let's say. I wonder if the Soviets do somehow begin to work with the Japanese. I mean, the Japanese just wouldn't like the USA, and not liking the USA would mean you can't like France and the UK either. Maybe it would force their hand. Although there was the Japanese-Russo war, like only like 30 years before for that, I, maybe they'd let that go. They might want to work together in fighting China. But right now, the Soviets are actually attacking Iran and Afghanistan. And the British are actually trying... Oh my... Whoa! Whoa! Okay, without the Germans here, uh, the Allies are bringing their attention to a whole new other thing. Trying to fix the uh, warlord period in China. This is a lot of people in chaos, so I could see that. Uh, I don't know how well the British are going to do, though, exactly. I mean, they have the French in Indochina as well. Ethiopia now moving in after Belgium. Bam! Mexico's now got Colombia in on their faction. Bulgaria is now conquered by Serbia. Ooh, and now the UK is dealing with a revolt of Siam. They had a lot of Thai Thailand, but then they just lost it. That actually might happen to Norway. They could easily see a uh, no-no German revolt here. That's scary. This is a scary France. I completely forgot they have all of Iberia. Siam again fighting the Allies. They're just fighting for their freedom. The southern Chinese warlords are now fighting the north with Mongolia. Shouldn't Japan and Manchukuo be allied? But okay, whatever. Soviets have peaced out with Iran and Afghanistan. Now it's the British going after them. Of course, now the British also going after Ireland. They seem to be kind of squeezing. They might be. Okay, well, they got them, but I feel like they're squeezing themselves a little too thin. Norway took out Belgium uh, and the Netherlands, but the Netherlands revolted. They tried to go after Poland. Is Norway now basically no-no Germany? <laughs> a weird thought. Ooh, the U.S. is now fighting just Mexico. Mexico hasn't called in their friends yet. It's over, though. Oh, Mexico lost their ally of... Oh, Panama just took out Colombia. That's crazy. Ooh, the World uh, Cup Alliance has added to their memberships. Uh, Chile, Peru, Bolivia. This is just becoming a regular South American 
Norwegian team. Norway finally has a new friend. It's uh, it's all of the Nordics, basically. This is like the Vikings coming back. Oh, and the British did end up destroying Siam or Thailand. The Chinese are slowly consolidating, but it's taking some time. Visually speaking, it really looks like the Allies are, are doing really well, but if they continue to lose land to Ethiopia like this, it's going to be bad. Finally, Mexico has completed the trifecta. They have all of the current Central American nations, along with Panama, who has Colombia. They're going to be getting themselves probably into a war with South America, Austria, and Romania teaming up. The British fighting so much out here. That's the thing about the, the Allies are going to be having to fight a lot. They're trying to figure out what they're going to do with all this power. They don't want to attack the Soviets, though, which it's really just the Soviets, now that I think about it, on the axis, because the, the Italians and Japanese, they aren't doing anything. The British are trying to extend their territory in South America a bit, it seems. All these wars have just popped up. I can't even keep up with that. The problem is the Allies are so rich, and they can throw around money to anyone. Uh, Switzerland looks like they, they took Paris. Switzerland literally just took Paris. The Swiss are the ones in Paris. The UK just declaring war on everyone out here, including Italy, which means that the Allies are officially at war with the uh, Axis. Oh my, that is, that is a lot. That is a lot to be dealing with. Let's see. Italy, I think, will survive because Rome is in a safe spot. Uh, Serbia was finally eliminated by Romania. Oh, this is really dangerous. Okay, well, maybe the Japanese can get a lot out of this. Why are you fighting so many people at the same time? Seems like a terrible idea. Maybe they don't have an option. Ethiopia is currently allied to who? Just Greece, for some reason. The Saads have risen up out of the British Empire. They've revolted. Okay, the Soviets look like they actually lost territory. So did the Italians. Austria just took out Switzerland. We have an Alpine Brotherhood going on. I don't know why I said that weird brotherhood. Brazil moving in after a thick Liberia in Africa. Dutch East Indies was just conquered. They, or they formed, I see. They got conquered and then they revolted immediately. The Japanese did gain territory in the Philippines and in southern China. Now we actually have Norway moving in after Ethiopia. Well, they actually did a peace deal. Norway really does look kind of scary. They just don't have enough allies, though, to be honest. We actually have Manchukuo briefly declaring war on Japan. Now Norway's moving in after a Romania that, oh, there we go. So again, Norway gets bigger and bigger. The issue is, oh, and now maybe they're going to be the ones to destroy Poland. There's like nobody left to really ally, though. Like everyone is already in teams. Soviets were trying to finally eliminate the new force of Norway. If only the Norwegians would join the Axis, that's probably what they need to do, to be honest. And this would be kind of like the same scenario we started with, in a way. Ethiopia and Italy getting into it, that is not surprising. And they did. They just took out, wow. Okay, there's a huge war. Wow. The Bahamas are really close to Washington, D.C. Uh, is this really going to be the top faction in, in the Western Hemisphere? It looks like it. Now it's Panama that's moving in after uh, French Africa. Well, the U.S. has got a lot of their territory back. There's actually so many wars going on, I can't even keep up. Turkey looking like a super big player now. Oh, man, they just eliminated Italy. Luckily, the so they had to peace out. Norway's losing everything. There goes Panama in Africa. I think Mexico just annexed the Bahamas. There's only two Axis members left. They're both not looking that great. Turkey's going nuts. France is very close to falling. That's the thing. When when these uh, these alliances lose a member, it's, it's huge. It's a huge loss. No more gold donations. Okay, the Soviets are now finally taking some people over. There we go. They got two kills. The winner of the Chinese Civil War seems to probably be these guys. They're, they're really the closest thing that resembles China. Panama now has full control. This is a scary Panama. As long as they can he help uh, Mexico aid and aid their war against the U.S., it's gonna get crazy. Or maybe not. I think Me uh, the U.S. just did a little... They jumped through Haiti to get to South America. We'll see if they can actually get to this capital, though. Turkey now has a majority of Europe, but we'll see. If the Soviets just win this one war, it's gonna change everything. Oh, they're exploding right now. They had so much territory from that. Okay, this is really looking like the Cold War now. Having all of, like, Eastern Europe. Panama still trying to fight the USA back. There's actually only 21 nations on this world. Look how well these revolts from the British are doing. This is an Ethiopian revolt and a Saudi Arabian revolt. Oh, the United States, they declared war on Canada and then they just eliminated them instantly. Do you, wait, what happened? I think Canada might have left the Allies. Why would they ever do that? <laughs> Canada, come on. Oh, this is actually Norway and Turkey working together as well as Iran. U.S. is slowly catching the USSR in terms of territory. Uh, we have a backstab of the, the, I think the U.S. has gone, I don't know if they've gone fascist or something. The French and the uh, British, uh, or wait a second, I don't even know. Mexico and the U.S. are now allied. And then we have France and Turkey. And then is this, is the U.K. even still here? They are still here. Everything's breaking down now. Norway's smart there, keeping their capital nice and safe up here. Meanwhile, as they gain territory in South America, UK just annexed the Philippines. Soviet's dealing with a lot. Oh, they, they, they pieced out of that. Still allied to Japan, though, even though Japan has been not the greatest friend. Just a weak one, I guess. Mexico uniting with Central America. London, which has been taken by the Soviets, meaning 
that the UK had to move their capital to Afghanistan. That obviously seems like the first place I would move my capital to as well. We actually have the British and French getting into it. The French are actually close to Washington, D.C. Norway just lost their capital. They are down to a thousand gold, too. And their regions are still very much like a global empire. Oh my, what is happening with the Soviets? The French so close to taking Ethiopia. They only had 3,000 gold. And I think Norwegian dominance is over. They have ran out of money. Man, it is ugly out here, folks. I don't even know what else to say. These are some horrible borders. Japan was annexed by the Soviets. Actually, the British and Soviet Union are working together. There goes Ethiopia, finally. They had a good... Good run. And we're down to five. The USA, the British, the Soviets, the Australians, and uh, that's, I think that's still Panama. Didn't think to see them. One is not like the other. But anything is possible in this world. The British are now being attacked from all sides. Oh, the Soviets are out of money, though. Oh, so is Australia almost. Oh, the UK is almost too. This is getting crazy. Pretty much everyone's almost out of money. Oh, and the UK is. They're going to have to peace out as much as possible. Panama's up to a thousand. There it is again. Zero. So they're, they're, oh man. Well, the US and the Soviets are getting into it. Panama's eating up all of this. Oh, the UK and the Soviets are now teaming up. Up. Technically, they're all relatively close in size. UK is finally gonna fall, and I guess so is the USA. Though the Soviets have been backed all the way up to Siberia, it's really looking like they might turn this out. Uh, yes, the entire world has just turned red. An incredible feat somehow. I don't know how they end up with this win. They looked so horrible at times. I guess the Soviet Union didn't even need Germany after all. And big thanks to my patrons. Destiny Drew Ducker, Ducker, the Model Cartographer. Sebi, if you hear Subscribe this, I love to Drew now. I am the king of fat Norwal. Carmel S. No Inquisitor's various channels now run by best AI. Girl, Lugs Order, and five, six, ten. Robert E. Rye the Pie. The Great Ralphie. The Mexican the Wicked 760. Zane John Boy, Denver. Glad Jack Traven's annoying friend. And why am I doing this?